everyone and welcome to Isip Nayan, your math guide through senior high school. So for this video, we are going to discuss lesson 2 of general mathematics, constant, linear, and piecewise function. Okay, so do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel, Isip Nayan. So for this video, we have three objectives. The first is to define and differentiate a constant function, linear function, and a piecewise function. The second one is to evaluate and graph a constant function, linear function, and a piecewise function. Third is to represent three life situations using constant, linear, and piecewise functions. We'll start with constant function. So when we say constant function, it is a function of the form f of x is equal to c, where c is constant. So as we all know, when we say constant, it is a value that does not change have an example. Say we have f of x is equal to 2. So the graph of f of x is equal to 2 looks like this. So this red line right here is the graph of f of x is equal to 2. So when we have the function f of x is equal to negative 3, the graph would now look like this. So this line right here is the graph of f of x is equal to negative 3. Now, um, as you can see with our previous examples, the graph of a horizon of a constant function is always a horizontal line. Okay, so it only moves up or down dependent on the value of the constant. So in a constant function, for any value of x, there is only one value of y. The domain is your set of real numbers while the range consists of only one value. So, for example, we have the function f of x is equal to 2. So, the domain is always the same. That is your set of real numbers. So, that's x such that x is an element of real numbers. While the range is dependent on the constant right here. So, the range is y such that y is equal to 2. So, this is the domain and the range of f of x is equal to 2 written in set builder notation. So, what if we have f of x is equal to negative 3? So, the value of the domain is still your set of real numbers while the range is y such that y is equal to negative 3. So, that is the domain and the range of a constant function. Okay? So, how do you use or how do you represent a real-life situation using a constant function? Let's have an example. A telecommunications company offers an unlimited access to internet for a fixed amount of 1499 a month. So, let's try to construct a function that will show the monthly bill given the amount of data consumed. So, before we are able to create a function that is first define the variables in the function. So, since it is a function, we have two variables, x and y. So, in here, we have the monthly bill and the amount of data consumed. So, since the monthly bill is dependent on the amount of data consumed, we will represent y as the monthly bill and x as the data consumed. Okay? So, in your given situation, 1,499 is a fixed amount. So, that does not change even if your amount of data is very high or very low since you have unlimited access to internet. Therefore, we can show the monthly bill given the amount of data consumed using the function y is equal to 1,499. Okay? So, regardless of the amount of data consumed, the value of the monthly bill or the monthly bill that you'll be paying remains the same, 1,499. So, that is one of the examples of a constant function in a real-life situation. Now, let's move on to linear functions. Okay, so a linear function is a function of the form f of x is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So remember, for a function to become linear, the degree should always be 1. So the, the highest degree of the function will always be 1. 
Now let's have an example. Say we have the function f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So when you try to graph this, the graph looks like this. Okay, so this orange line right here, slanting orange line, is the graph of the function f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Another example of a linear function whose graph looks like this is f of x is equal to 1 half, negative 1 half x minus 2. So as you can see, the graph of the function leads, uh, leans towards the left. So, this is uh, dependent on the value of the leading coefficient. So, since the leading coefficient here is negative, the graph leans towards the left. Okay. Now, the graph of a linear function is always a straight line. Kaya nga siya tinawag na linear. We have the, the word line here. So, as given in... Our previous examples, lagi po siyang straight line. The domain and range of any linear function is the set of real numbers. And this is true to all linear functions. Okay? Now, how do we apply or how do we apply a linear function in a real-life situation? So, for example, a startup business spent 1,000 pesos on raw materials to make jewelry and sold each for 25 pesos. Suppose that um, he is not required to pay sales tax and the net income depends solely on the number of pieces sold, Let's try to construct a function that will show the net profit given the number of jewelry pieces sold. Okay, so again, let's identify first your variables. So we have the net profit that is dependent on the number of jewelry pieces sold. So, we let y be equal to the net profit and x be equal to the number of jewelry pieces sold. So, how do we determine the net profit given the number of jewelry pieces sold? So, it is stated here that each jewelry is uh, worth 25 pesos, is sold for 25 pesos. So, when you say profit, this is the gain or tubo. Okay? So we multiply 25 pesos to the number of pieces sold and we deduct the product with your raw materials or the cost that you spend on raw materials. Thus, you will have a function that is f of x is equal to 25x minus 1. So, 25 is the cost of each piece of jewelry multiplied by the number of jewelries that you sold. And then you subtract that. This is your net income. You subtract your net income with your cost of raw materials. So, this function will now give you the net profit depending on the number of jewelry pieces sold. Okay? So, this is an example of... Uh, situation that involves a linear function. Okay? So, our last kind of function that we're going to tackle is the piecewise function. Okay? So, ano ba yung tinatawag nating piecewise function? A piecewise function is a function that is composed of multiple sub-functions where each sub-function applies to a certain interval of the domain. So, in here, you have f of x is equal to negative 1 if x is less than 2 and x plus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 2. So, this is your piecewise function. So, it's not, it's all composed of two sub-functions. Okay, so this is the first sub-function, it's negative 1. And the second sub-function is x plus 2. So, negative 1 can only be used for values where x is less than 2. And x plus 2 will be used for values of x that is greater than or equal to 2. So, when we try to graph a piecewise function, the graph would look like this. Okay? So, this is the subgraph for x f of negative 1. And this is the subgraph for x plus 2. Okay, let's have another example. 
say we have f of x is equal to negative x plus 1 when x is less than 0 and x minus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 0. So when you try to graph this particular function, the graph would look like this. So this is the graph of x minus 1 and this graph is the subgraph for negative x plus 1 as you okay the domain and range of a piecewise function can be easily identified through its graph so for example we have this function f of x is equal to negative 1 when x is less than 2 and x plus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 2 so when you try to graph this it would look like this so the domain as you can see can be any real number so any real number can be substituted to x here there is no limitation as to what value of x can be substituted therefore it is the set of real numbers now we're going to take a look at the range so the range of the function can be negative 1 so this is a constant sub function so it can be negative 1 or the values of y that is greater than or equal to 3 as you can see in this subgraph right here okay so you write the range as y such that y is equal to negative 1 and y is greater than or equal to 3 okay so that is the range of the piecewise function another example is this piecewise function so the graph looks like this okay so it it's continuous upward both upwards so there's no restriction for x okay therefore the domain can be any real number okay while the range is, is uh, as you can see here the uh, graph or the points in the graph are all above negative 1 okay so there's no value of y below negative 1 therefore your range is y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 1 now how do we how is piecewise function applied to a real life situation so Say, for example, we have the fare matrix for Grab. So, the minimum fare for regular Grab car is 80 pesos for the first 4 kilometers. If the distance exceeds 4 kilometers, the base fare is 40 pesos and 10 pesos for every kilometer. So, let's construct a function that would represent the fare of the passenger given the distance traveled. So, in this situation, there are two variables so the fare of the passenger and the distance traveled so since the fare of the passenger is dependent on the distance traveled we represent y as the passenger fare and x as the distance traveled okay so in here we have two um, conditions for x so the first condition is first four kilometers okay so that is when x is greater than 0 but less than or equal to 4. So when the distance traveled or x exceeds 4 kilometers, then you'll have to use this um, situation right here. So we can write uh, if the distance exceeds 4 kilometers, so we have 40 plus 10 pesos for every kilometer. So every kilometer is uh, represented by x so that can be 10 times x so when you write that as a piecewise function you have this one so we have f of x is equal to 80 so this is 80 for the first four kilometers so when x is greater than zero but less than or equal to four and 40 plus 10 x if x is greater than four so this is how you will uh, represent the fare of the passenger given the distance traveled.
Okay, so for our next example, we have this. In a furniture company, the salary of the employees is based on sales commission. Their basic pay is 15,000 plus 10% of all sales less than 20,000 pesos. For sales of 20,000 pesos to 45,000 pesos, their basic pay is added to 12% of their total sales. If their total sales exceeds 45,000 pesos, their basic pay is topped up with 15% of their total sales. Now, let's try to construct a function that will show the salary of the employee given his total sales for the month. So, again, we will have to represent the variables first. So, we have two variables, the salary of the employee and his total sales for the month. Now, since the salary is dependent on the total sales, we let y be equal to the salary of the employee and x be the total monthly sales of the employee. Okay, now as you can see, um, the total monthly sales has three conditions. So, it can either be less than 20,000, from 20,000 to 45,000, or it will exceed 45,000 pesos. Okay, so since we have three conditions for x, there will be three subfunctions as well. Okay, now how do we determine the salary of the employee? So the basic pay is constant, so that's 15,000 pesos, S pesos, and we simply add 10%, 12%, or 15% of the total sales. Now how do we determine the percentage of the sales? So, we simply multiply either 10%, 12%, or 15% to X, which is the total monthly sales of the employee. So, we'll have a function that looks like this. So, we have three sub-functions. The first sub-function is for values of X that is less than 20,000. So, for values of X less than 20,000, we add 15,000 by 10% or 0 0.10 times x. So, for values of x from 20,000 to 45,000 pesos, we add 15,000 plus 12% of x. So, that's 0 0.12x. Notice that the equal sign is in this sub-function. It is because uh, if you have exactly 20,000 or exactly 45,000, you will have to use this sub-function. Okay? Now, for values of x that exceeds 45,000 pesos, you'll have to add 15,000 plus 15% 15 of x. So, that is how you determine the salary of the employee based on the monthly sales. Okay, so at this point, um, you're going to, I'm going to give you the Benedictine Hallmark for this lesson. So, the Benedictine Hallmark for this lesson is stability. Okay, so why stability? Now, like a piecewise function, um, our the journey of our life is not constantly going up or going up. It can uh, move like a constant function, constant lang, hindi nagbabago. Or at some point, it may go up or it may also go down. Okay? So, that's dependent on how you are in your life. Now, how does stability apply to these kinds of situations in our life? So, one thing that keeps us sane Okay, through the ups and downs of our life is our stable faith. Okay, so the faith that um, everything happens for a reason, God has a purpose for everything that is happening in our life. So stability keeps us grounded. Okay, stability keeps us sane that somewhere along the road there is um, a reason why this is happening in our lives. So this is our Benedictine Hallmark for this lesson. I hope that you have learned and you have achieved all the objectives for this particular video tutorial. And I'll see you next time.